Last week, I received a phone call from a wife who's really struggling because her husband has gotten off to an awful adjustment in federal prison. Apparently, this family had watched some of our videos, felt somewhat prepared, but didn't do like a real deep dive, didn't really go through the material, didn't, uh, didn't go all in. Watching a few videos is a start, but may not be enough to really understand this foreign world of imprisonment. So apparently... Her husband has been in prison for a little while, kept his locker open. Now, I always kept my locker open in prison. My bunkie can get things, my friends. I was never that worried about people stealing things. But there are some guys that will always close their locker, even if they're going to be gone for 20 seconds to make a phone call or whatever. But I always kept mine open. In this case, this prisoner kept his locker open and felt as if some things were stolen or were missing. And had he truly prepared and understood this foreign world of confinement, he would have recognized that perhaps while in society, you should run or go to law enforcement if you've been robbed or stolen from, of course, in prison, it's a fundamentally different world. And instead of saying nothing and starting to lock his locker moving forward, he ran to staff. And running to staff led to a whole just problems, right? They view him as a snitch, an investigation started, and what should have been a very easy experience for him in a minimum security camp is wrought with fear and anxiety. He's being ostracized, and I can't get into full detail about what they're doing, what some of the prisoners are doing to him inside of that minimum security camp, but it's tragic, and it's sad. He asked for a transfer. The case manager said, that ain't going to happen. You're staying. Why do these things happen? Why, if you know you're moving into a foreign world, wouldn't you invest the time to prepare? The lion's share of people who become immersed in a government investigation never imagined in a million years they would become immersed in a government investigation. Many of them look back and think, I never thought that would happen, yet it happened. Well, perhaps this prisoner thought, I'm not going to have any problems. I, I don't have bad intentions. Nothing bad is going to happen to me, just like he never thought he would ever become indicted. So it it behooves all of you to invest the time to understand this warped world you're moving into. That's a post-sentencing example. Here's a pre-sentencing example. Uh, About two weeks ago, I received a call, a very sad phone call from a husband and wife who had just left the courthouse after the prisoner or the husband learned that he was sentenced to 37 months in federal prison. I was the first call they made. And on the call, they said, we've watched a lot of your, your videos. And unfortunately, we ran the idea by our lawyer of getting prepared. And he said, look, you can expect to get probation or home confinement. There's nothing that you really need to do. Uh, You've hired the right guy. I'm a former U.S. attorney. I know this judge. I have a good relationship. You've paid me a lot of money. Let me handle it. And I said, well, how did you feel when you heard that? They're like, well, that was a different message than we were getting from your videos. And it's like, it's not my video. It's what we're interviewing, what they're contributing to our video, namely like Judge Stephen Boo, who mentioned how Lawyers are paid to articulate. He, lawyers are paid to talk about where you're worthy of leniency. Judges want to hear directly from you. Judge Boo said, if, if you break my window, don't say I'm sorry. What are your plans to fix the window? The, the tragic irony is they watch these videos with Judge Boo, with Judge Bennett. They watch them. Yet against their better judgment, they chose to do nothing because they didn't want to push their lawyer. They didn't want to say something like, I appreciate you sharing that with me, yet I've watched these very interesting interviews with federal judges who talked about what defendants need to do to prepare for the probation report for sentencing. I saw an interview with Hugh Horwitz, the former director of the BOP, who talked about the value of a reentry plan and how work leading up to sentencing can influence that. Shouldn't we do more? Instead of asking those questions, it was, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Lawyer, I understand I won't push. I'm not indicting all lawyers. We work with great lawyers. Today's the 27th of September. Tomorrow I'm flying to Chicago to train lawyers along with my colleague Sam Mangal at a conference. We're grateful for the opportunity and grateful they these phenomenal lawyers welcome the opportunity to learn from our team, crisis managers, not prison consultants. Prison consultant is a degrading term. Anyone can go to prison, create a YouTube channel, and fancy themselves a consultant. We're in the crisis management space of working to prepare for the shortest sentence to have a productive journey through prison, creating higher levels of liberty while on probation and ensuring this experience doesn't define the rest of your life. We're crisis managers, not prison consultants. Coming back to this 37-month sentence, they said, we'd like to change the probation report. 
And we want to just undo a lot of what's happened. And of course, we can't change the past. And if I could, I wouldn't be filming YouTube. I wouldn't be filming YouTube videos. <laughs> I would be doing things differently. We can't change the past. And this family, husband and wife, were concerned when the sentencing judge opened the hearing by asking said defendant, have you read the probation report? And the lawyer's kind of nudging him, like, say yes, say yes, say yes. But he's like, I didn't really read the report. I don't understand the ramifications of what's in it. And some judges, according, I think it was Judge Bulwer who told us at a conference, he values the probation report more than the sentencing memorandum, more than the government's position piece. That's how big a deal the probation report is, which is why all of you should get the narrative in the probation report, because if the judge is reliant on it, get all of that content in there. So they're devastated. They can't change the past. So here, here's how I'm going to close this less than 10 minute video. I beg all of you, at no expense, we have nothing to sell you. And I'm a marketer. And I've been on webinars before. And I've been to a webinar where it's nothing but a sales pitch in disguise. And at the end, it's an aggressive close to buy something, schedule a call, sign up for some monthly continuity program. We have nothing to sell you. Had the person in prison who's having trouble, or this family who just got a longer prison term than they would have expected, invested the time to prepare, things would have gone differently. So every Friday and every Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Pacific, our team leads a live webinar. They're led with a number of people on our team, but the leader is Michael Santos, who served 26 consecutive years in federal prison. Michael doesn't do consumer work. He leads our prison professors, the, the nonprofit, creating content for people in prisons and jails all across the country. But he absolutely leads these webinars on Friday and Saturday. And as many of you know, I met Michael Santos in prison. He helped change my life and get me on the right track while in federal prison. We started this business to, together. I don't have this business if I don't meet him. Let me be clear about that. So what if you had the same golden opportunity? This sounds salesy, once in a lifetime opportunity. You have the same opportunity that I had to learn from Michael Santos, who mastered and conquered 26 consecutive years in prison. Come on, man. And not only can you learn from Michael, you learn from all of the subject matter experts that our team has interviewed, former directors, wardens, people who are in the halfway houses, federal probation. We interview them and we share that work with our team, policies, what's changing, what's happening inside of the prisons, a recent change to the First Step Act in 18 months sentences or less, what happens? So we cover all of these in our free webinars. And I encourage you to go to that link below, register with your email address. You will get no marketing emails from us, no schedule a call with our team, no buy, it's all free. You simply need to invest the time to show up. And I encourage you to join live. We'll stay on all day if we have to, to answer all of your questions because we know this is important to you. And we it's an opportunity for you to learn from Michael and the subject matter experts that we interview. Prior webinars include preparing to surrender, disciplinary infractions, critical thinking in the Bureau of Prisons, reputation management in the BOP. In fact, we had a former client, Scott Laney, on the webinar talking about how his website really influenced a case manager, showed how productive he was while in prison, because all of you want to get out early but it does no good to stand outside of your case manager's office saying you have a job waiting for you. You want to get home to your family. Case manager is going to say, great, you should have thought about that before you broke the law. So we cover the value of a reentry plan. What should be in that reentry plan? So rather than asking for more liberty or an earlier release, you can show them why you're worthy of it without begging. We cover all of that inside of these webinars. So that's how I'll close. Please go to prisonprofessors.com. Register every Thursday. You will receive an email from Michael with instructions on how to join the webinar. And if you register, of course, you'll get access to all of the prior webinars that we missed. We can learn as much from the good and the bad. These are two bad case studies of people who kind of knew what to do, yet they didn't do it. They thought, you know, no big deal. This isn't going to happen to me. But all of us felt that way at one point. I'm never going to become immersed in a government investigation. Yet here, yet here we are. We want you to do better and we want you to register for our free webinar. And we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. Please come with questions. We'll stay on as long as we need to to answer them all. Thank you so much for your time. Goodbye.